Recently, my wife and daughter started doing a thing called Kanamari. What that is, it's, it's removing everything from your house that doesn't bring you joy. That's the basic philosophy of this whole thing. In other words, they go back to their closet and they get the clothes out that doesn't bring them joy, and they either throw them away or give them to the Goodwill. It's really made a difference. At first, I thought, oh, man, this is just another chick thing that's going to really go nowhere. I don't understand it. I'm just going to lose a bunch of stuff that I bought. But you know what? It, it really has made a difference. I have to compliment them and praise them for it because I go back to my closet now, and it feels better. I can't believe it. Of course, they start with the clothes, and you just notice a real dramatic difference when everything of that's gone. And then they went in the bathroom, got rid of all the old hairbrushes that they haven't used and doesn't bring them joy. And went to the kitchen, got rid of all the kitchen stuff that doesn't bring them joy. And that's the only criteria that they use. They ask themselves when they look at an object, does this object bring me joy or not? And if it doesn't, they get rid of it. And of course, I never realized that that would improve anything. I mean, there's not so many negative feelings when I go back and look in my closet. I mean, I used to have everything in there was old, and either it didn't fit, or it was it was just old and worn out, and it was mixed up with all my new stuff that did fit. So when I go back there now, I don't see any of the old and, and stuff that don't fit. I just see the kind of the new and the stuff that does fit, and, and honestly, it gives me a better feeling. But it was from this experience that it made me think about my life. You know, what things are there in my life that I'm holding on to that doesn't bring me joy? I know a lot of you is probably thinking, "Uh uh-oh, here's another podcast on how to be happy and find happiness. I mean, there's been so many of those and so much of that stuff going on. And everybody says, if you follow this program, you'll find happiness or take this medicine or go to this workshop or read this book. I mean, they all have claims of happiness. This preacher says, if you give me 10% of your income, you'll be happy and prosperous and free. And all these things is really not lived up to what they claim they would. If they would, and if they had, then everybody would be doing it. But there's no spot, there's no place, there's no program that can provide you with complete happiness all the time. I mean, we can't live our life like we did when we were shooting dope and drinking. You know, you just want to be high all the time. Life isn't like that. But if we can make it a little bit better, I mean, add a little, one, two, ten percent more happiness or joy to our life. Shouldn't we do it? Especially if the stuff's in our life that is not bringing us joy is removed. I mean, what's the cost of that? Shouldn't we try to do that? It might improve our life somewhat, but we'll not reach that euphoric state of nirvana. But let's just do a little better if we can. So when I looked at my life, I started asking myself, what are the things in my life? that does not bring me joy that I continue to hold on to. Well, I divided my life into two parts, external and internal. In other words, I wanted to look at all the external things like my house or my clothes or, you know, my job, relationships or even external, animals that I have. Of course, they all bring me joy. But anyway, all the external things in my life, my television, Facebook, telephone, things like that, does that bring me joy? I mean, I have external things in my life that I either bought or relationships I got into with others that used to bring me joy, but either I've grown out of it or it just no longer brings me joy, like the old pair of pants in the closet. I mean, I'm, we don't stay stagnant. we all in constant growth. So I had to look at some of the things that I brought into my life that at that time did bring me joy, but is no longer bringing me joy and maybe even bringing me some unhappiness. And when I looked at that, I realized that some of this stuff was just nothing more than an old habit and that hadn't brought me joy in a long, long time. I even had to look at this beautiful home that I have. I mean, I remember when I bought it, it just brought me and my wife so much joy. At that point in time, it was our dream home, and we just knew it was an excellent place to raise our children. And it just brought us so much joy, and we just worked on it constantly, just wanted to be around it and be with it. But that's not the case today. My kids are raised and they had a good life in this home and they had plenty of yard space and had a nice room to themselves, but they're all gone now. So the same reason that I bought this house that would bring me joy is no longer there. Now it's just a bunch of empty rooms and massive space and a big yard. And I look at the house and I love it, but it doesn't bring me joy. 
As a matter of fact, when I look at it, I kind of feel dread of all the stuff I have to do or hired out to do. And look at that crazy lawn I got to mow. It takes three hours. I also looked at my television. I thought, man, I used to love to sit there and watch a lot of shows, documentaries and stuff. I love learning. and But, you know, I don't have the same feeling about that anymore. I'm tired of just sitting there watching that thing over and over again. There's a few shows that might bring me some joy, but overall, you know, the TV brings me less joy than it ever has. I'm on the minus side of joy, so to speak. And I even looked at some of the relationships that I've had for years and just hanging in there, guess because we knew each other for so long, friends and stuff. But these friends are, some of them have gotten kind of mean or they took a different path and when you're with them, they just have negative vibes and you just kind of want to get away from them as soon as you can. They don't bring me joy and I don't bring them joy. I can tell that. We just hold on because I think we're supposed to. So I had to look at my relationships and ask myself that very question that my wife and daughter asked themselves. Does this relationship bring me joy? Now, we don't want to get too far off track on this and become so selfish and self-centered that we won't help anybody. That's not what we're talking about. It brings me joy to help people. I can go down to a Tishwin and there's a lot of negativity sometimes there. A lot of guys are griping and moaning and jumping on me, but I get more joy out of helping them than, I, than the price I have to pay than the negative. So yeah, it brings me joy. You know, if there's 51% joy that that neg- negative relationship brings me and 49% negative, well, it's okay. Because I'm supposed to be doing that. It brings me joy to do what I was meant to do. So the joy of those kind of relationships are supposed to be held on to and and nurtured. Well, how about the internal things in my life? You know, when I go into my internal closet, my inside closet, I have to look at things that don't bring me joy. I even thought about cussing. I know that sounds weird nowadays because cussing is pretty widespread and They didn't go by. You don't hear that F word out of somebody. But, you know, I got to listening to myself when I cuss, and I ask myself, does that bring me joy? Is that something internally I want to get rid of if it doesn't bring me joy? Or how about judging others? You know, I used to enjoy judging others because I would always come out on top. But, you know, it doesn't bring me joy anymore. I feel bad when I judge others. I don't mean I don't judge their behavior or some child molester. It's not like that. But judging others, I have no right to do that. I always end up saying, who in the hell do I think I am? Well, judging others doesn't bring me any joy. I like to get that out of my internal closet. And then I went into my fears. How I wake up in the morning and they're all sitting there staring at me. The older I get, I worry about my health and, you know, finances and everything like this. Fears come at you. These are internal fears that I have. They don't bring me joy. Why am I hanging around them? And then the anger and resentments that I might have. I must admit that there's been considerable improvement in that area. I don't hold on to resentments like I used to. I hate them, man. I hate feeling them. They do not bring me joy. They used to years and years ago to sit there and hate someone and fantasize about how they could get hurt or get paid back for what they did to me. That no longer brings me joy. That's evil joy anyway, but it doesn't bring me joy. But there's some I need to look at and see if I can just get the rest of them out by their roots. And then I went in there in my internal closet and looked at the guilt. I had to look at the hurt and pain that I might have brought into the world. You know, when you have guilt, it's just a regurgitation of these demonic negative feelings that go over and over and over again. You just hate it. But, you know, you think about something you did to this person or you stole this or you said this or you did this. And that guilt just stays there and eats on you and eats on you and eats on you. Now, guilt itself is not a bad thing. It should lead us to want to get rid of it, you know, make amends and get forgiven and things like that. But when you hold on to it, it's like them old pants again. It's in my closet. I need to get that out of there because it does not bring me joy. The big book even says how we squander the hours. And we do. We squander hours over and over going through that internal closet with all that anger and fear and guilt and all the other stuff that goes with it that does not bring you any joy. As a matter of fact, when you're in that state of mind, in other words, when you're feeling that guilt or feeling that resentment or experiencing or feeling that fear, 
it takes away what joy you do have in life. So we're sitting there with a really dirty, cluttered up closet internally and externally. And you know what's so beautiful is that we that's in this program, this 12-step program, we know how to take an inventory on these things. I mean, that's wonderful. We got to ask ourselves, how do we clean out this in- internal closet? You know, we need what do we need? Self-forgiveness? Well, that won't work. It never has worked, and I really doubt if it ever will work. I've only been able to forgive myself to the exact degree that God has forgiven me. I know for years I tried that self-forgiveness that people and preachers and psychologists would tell me to do, but I never felt forgiven until I was forgiven by God. And you know what? This is the honest truth. I have forgiven myself as much as God has forgiven me. I no longer have that self-condemnation that I used to have. I don't walk around wishing I was dead. I don't feel that torturing guilt I used to have that would just eat my lunch day after day after day. I have forgiven myself, but I could only forgive myself based on the degree that God has forgiven me. I mean, self-forgiveness without God is like eating a hamburger with no meat on it. It just—it might resemble a hamburger, and it might look like a hamburger, but it's not a hamburger. So as I sat in there pondering all these things, I realized that what the real problem was, was me. Self is the problem. Selfishness, self-centeredness, self's the problem. And as the big book says, there seems to be no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. We need God's help. Of course, we can clean up some of these external things, That's not bringing us joy. But when it comes to those internal things, we're probably going to need God's help on that. And that means that we're going to have to take God into this dirty, embarrassing closet and show him all the damaged stuff that we have. But before we do that, we have to do an inventory of these things that's in that closet that no longer bring us joy. And yes, that leads us to the fourth step or the tenth step for you old timers. So, you know, why don't we take a moment to look at all the resentments and ask, do they still bring me joy to resent this person or this thing or this organization? How about fear? Do I still feel that I need fear to motivate me or to make me cautious or to make me feel more secure? Because we fear something enough, we won't do it or we won't act on it. And we use fear in that way, I guess, that brings us some type of benefit. But are we now really ready to let go of this fear? because we know it doesn't bring us what we intended it to do. And how about this guilt, this self-condemnation that you think in some weird, twisted way that we can make ourselves pay enough for what we've done, that we can sit there and use guilt to make us pay until we feel the debt has been paid. But of course, that never happens. The debt is never paid because it can't be paid by guilt. And isn't this undeserving and self-condemnation type of attitude that you torture yourself with? Isn't it just another way of you playing God and make yourself pay enough until you feel that you've paid for your sins, so to speak? Are we ready to take a look at those things that is causing us guilt and want to get rid of them, want to get them out of our closet? After we get those things written down, we need to go to someone and do what we call a fifth step and admit to God, to yourself, and another human being, the exact natures of all this stuff. For those of you who don't have a sponsor or not in the program, of course, you can go to your preacher or priest. It works the same. I mean, these principles are not just exclusively for the alcoholic and addict. But once you've done that inventory and you went and read it off to someone, you got to ask yourself, am I entirely ready to let God remove this stuff out of my life? Am I really ready to let go of them old jeans that I've had for years or those old shoes that I thought was so comfortable But do they really bring me joy? Am I really willing to put them in the trash? In other words, are you really willing to let go and let God take that stuff out of your life? And then what you do is you ask God to remove those things. Remove all those things that doesn't bring you joy. The guilt, the fears, the hurts, the angers, all that stuff. The resentments. So humbly asking him to do so. I think where a lot of us fail to understand is that sometimes joy and happiness doesn't come by bringing things into our life, but sometimes it comes by getting things out of our life. An example would be like, if I ask you what darkness was, the right answer would be the absence of light. And if I ask you what light was, the right answer, of course, would be the absence of darkness. Or if I told you what is death, and you'd say, Bill, it's the absence of life. 
And what is life? Of course, the absence of death. And so you see, sometimes happiness, sometimes joy is the absence of what's making you unhappy. And that are these things that are internally inside of us. And the removal of those things will bring more joy and happiness into our life. I know that life is full of pain and disappointment and rejection. I know I've had plenty of it in my own life. What I'm saying is life is tough enough and painful enough on its own. So if you ever have the opportunity to get rid of some of the things that steal in your joy, take it, embrace it, get rid of those things, and thank God for it, whether those things are internal or external. It's just things that are eating at your joy and reducing it considerably. So if you get a chance to get rid of that, do it. You know, life is kind of like the old gold prospectors. You know, most of what was in their pan when they'd go under water there and seek for gold, most of what was in their pan was just useless sand and dirt. But once in a while, they'd get a gold nugget, and it made all that worth it. So maybe if we do this, we will have more joy as we trudge this road of happy destiny. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. I'd like to thank you for listening to these podcasts. And if you enjoyed them and you think they're worthwhile, share them with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, would you go to the recoveryeffect.com and sign up and subscribe? And that way you'll get one every time I put one out. Again, I want to thank you for listening and let's keep this thing going.